What's up guys, Asian here again with another Wolf Hunter uh, theory crafting video. Um, this is the first video uh, from Denmark, so I am on my laptop, uh, which does mean it's a different sound card, um, it's a different webcam. Um, so I apologize if there's a little bit of jankiness going on here. I only have one screen to work with, so I can't like put OBS on a different uh, on a different screen. I don't have my intro video saved on this laptop because it is a new laptop that I'm working with. Uh, so during these next couple of videos are going to be definitely a little bit different from my usual videos. Not necessarily the same quality, unfortunately, uh, just because of the limitations that I had. Because <laughs> I'm not obviously going to uh, bring my desktop and a monitor to Denmark with me. That's just a little bit of uh, craziness right there. Um, so apologies for the lower quality of these videos, um, but hopefully um, you guys can still, you know, get the information that you need uh, from me today. So. Today we're going to be talking about the main hand enchants on stamina DPS uh, in a Wolf Hunter. Now, um, why are we talking about stamina main hand enchants? Why are they changing? Uh, so they're changing because uh, they changed how back bar enchants work when you are using um, a weapon ability. So on live right now in Somerset, the meta right now for stam DPS enchants is poison on your main hand, weapon damage on your off hand, and then on your back bar you have a ravage, double ravage health poison. Now, in Wolf Hunter, back bar weapon abilities and the tail poison injection blockade, those will proc whatever enchants are on your uh, back bar weapon at the time, and it will also memorize whether or not it is infused or not. So if you do endless tail with an infused poison damage enchant on your bow bar and you swap to your front bar, uh, endless tail will proc poison enchant with the infused value on the infused cooldown. Um, so that opens up the possibility of using, for example, like I said, a poison enchant on your bow bar, uh, and that frees up your main hand slot for a third enchant. Uh, so this is a pretty uh, substantial move for stamina DPS because now we no longer have to run double ravage health poisons. Uh, but there was a bit of questioning here as to whether or not you even wanted a poison uh, enchant on your back bar, and then on your main hand, would you want something like an absorbed stamina enchant, or would you want a disease enchant? So that's this is what this video is going to uh, look over today. Uh, so starting things off here, uh, so this is the spreadsheet, uh, so we have absorbed stamina, disease, then I had poison on the main hand, but I swapped out uh, the bow enchants on both of them. So the first one was absorbed stamina, and the second one was disease enchant. Um, and then for the absorbed stam and disease enchants on the main hand, I had a poison enchant on the back bar. So the idea is you always have a poison enchant going on somewhere, whether that's on your back bar or on your main hand. Uh, your off hand is always going to be weapon damage enchant. So uh, that is basically how that works. So for the absorbed stamina enchant, you can see here we pulled about uh, 52.3k or so on average. Disease enchant, as expected, would be a little bit higher because disease enchants do scale off your CP. And so it does scale off of um, uh, it does scale off of your blue CP's uh, absorbed stamina. is considered magic damage, so it will not scale off your blue CP. So as expected, uh, disease enchants do pull higher at 52.8k. Now with poison on our main hand and absorbed stamina on our back bar, we only pulled about 51.9k. And then with poison on our main hand, but disease on the bow bar, uh, we have 52.7k. So again, as expected, a little bit higher. Now, uh, obviously this would make it seem that disease would be the best option for your main hand enchant. And this is true if you can sustain it. The big problem here with stamina DPS is um, a lot of stamina DPS have shifted to a light attack build. So stamp sorts, samplers, um, Stamina Wardens, uh, Stamina Nightblades, they all use Light Attack builds at this point. Uh, there are some Warden builds, Stam Warden builds that use Heavy Attacks, and of course Stam DKs do best with the Heavy Attack builds. Uh, but most of the other uh, builds you see out there are Light Attack builds. And so having uh, Disease and Poison and Weapon Damage makes it a little bit harder to sustain yourself. So if you're able to sustain this rotation, then yes, Disease is going to be the strongest enchant for you. However, um, and right now PTS is down, and I am re-downloading it, so I'm not able to show you guys this right now. Uh, but on my comment metrics parses, and when I did these parses, I was getting a lot better sustain using the absorbed stamina enchants. Uh, so these are on my night blade, so obviously I finished each parse with stamina remaining and never had to heavy attack that many times. Uh, but for the absorbed stamina, um, for the absorbed stamina, uh, parses here that I did. I only had the heavy attack once. For the disease um, parses here, I had the heavy attack around 
between three and four times, depending uh, specifically whether uh, I accidentally like rebuffed uh, the bow proc instead of using it. Um, then for this parse, I didn't have to heavy attack at all. Like there was no, they, I was easily staying at above 60% stamina the entire time up until execute. And then here again, I had to heavy attack uh, three or four times here. So that's something you have to take into consideration here. Yes, on a dummy, absorbed stamina is going to be lower than disease. And that's just because disease, like I said, scales off your blue CP, the absorbed stamina does not. However, in a trial scenario, these dummies were done, uh, these parts were done with stamina night blade. And with DPS levels like this, you know, this is less than a two minute long fight. And that does make a difference in sustain. Um, so, you know, trials, boss fights uh, typically last longer than two minutes, unless you're some and part of a guild like Mechanical Challenge or Hodor or Blind Luck, in which case you probably wouldn't even be watching this video because you guys probably already know this. Um, but for those longer fights, you're going to need sustain, especially when you're using a light attack build. Um, and, and you're not a night blade because night blades, at the very least, um, have additional sustain to reaching strikes. Um, Average of classes, Templars, DK, well, DK is a heavy attack build. Uh, Sorks have dark deals, so they, they're, they're a little bit better off. But even sorks do need some additional sustain um, in order to maintain their rotation. Uh, so having that absorbed stamina enchant really helps you out when fights get really, really long. So for example, um, let's say you're in Rakat and you have to use a lot of break freeze because of uh, you're getting stunned during the uh, between pads um, two and three. You know you want that additional sustain there, um, or you're in Hoth and you're getting stunned a lot uh, by the uh, capacitors. You want that extra sustain to make up for the stamina you're losing when you break free because you failed to block one of the conduit strikes. Um, so that's something you want to take into consideration. Like on this spreadsheet right now, it's, it seems like disease is the best when it comes to your main hand enchant, but you don't want to, um, you know, ignore the extra sustain boost that you get from running absorbed stamina on your main hand. So for me personally, um, I will probably be running absorbed stamina rather than disease on my main hand because sustain for me is going to be a little bit more important. And I would gladly give up 400, 500 DPS if it means I'm able to sustain my rotation a lot, uh, a lot better. Just because heavy attacks are a DPS loss, and the more heavy attacks you have to do, the greater that loss is going to be. So you do want that additional sustain there. And it's not that much. It works out to be roughly about like 140 extra uh, regen, uh, which is, you know, not a whole lot. But in the grand scheme of things, you're getting back a lot of stamina the longer the fight goes on. So again, that's something you want to consider, and that's something that you're running into the side on personally. So yes, disease is going to be stronger if you're able to sustain it. If you can't sustain it, then absorb stamina is a very, very um, potentially good option for you to choose. Uh, so that is it for this video. I hope you guys found this video informative. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. And again, I apologize for the jankiness of this video. Uh, I am in Denmark, so I am working with that laptop. Um, the next couple of videos will, unfortunately, be like this uh, in terms of video quality, sound quality, things like that. Um, but again, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys have found this video informative, and I will see you guys in the next dungeon.